Hi everybody, Tim Hughes here. Um, I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Ignite. Um, I've got Ira Wolf with me today. Ira, what, before we get started in talking about this, where can people get hold of you? Absolutely. Uh, well, one is you can just do a Google search for me, uh, <laughs> Ira Wolf or Ira S. Wolf. Uh, I will show up in many, many places. Uh, you can also go to my website at successperformancesolutions.com or irawolf.com. So you've you, you've written six books. I have. That's uh, amazing. Yeah, and I don't even. It's even more amazing because I really don't like writing books. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I am an article. I I, and I I don't read books cover to cover either. I, I I will over time, but I tend to do things in short increments. Maybe it's no, but I was never diagnosed with ADHD, but maybe <laughs> maybe it is. Um, so I I write a lot of articles. Uh, and then it was like, you know, you should write a book. So I pulled together lots of articles uh, about 20 years ago. Uh, and my first book was called The Perfect Labor Storm. And uh, fortunately, it's about, not fortunately, but, uh, you know, it's okay, I was right. It's about today. It was about the convergence of demographics and globalization and technology and women in the workplace and, you know, aging baby boomers and and problems with education. It was the convergence of all those problems. And so the first time the first book was The Perfect Labor Storm. Uh, second book, uh, there was a couple other s sort of sub books in there, but uh, the main theme uh, was uh, became geek skeezers and Googleization. It was about technology and the four generations because as I was talking about the perfect labor storm and shortages and job skill shortages and difficulty hiring people, uh, people wanted to know um, what about those millennials? Oh yeah, uh, you know, and and that was in mid two thousands, and you know, here we are, fifteen years. Millennials later. are thirty years old. Still talking about millennials. Millennials yeah. are that evil. I mean, class. millennials are old. It's old. It's it's Gen Z now, isn't it? So if you move to your right, you move to your right a bit. We can see the picture of your right. book. So that's your your latest book is recruiting. That is the latest book. So you can see the theme. You can see the theme. Googleization. Um, so the perfect labor storm evolved into Googleization, and Googleization became the convergence of people, technology, and business. Uh, and I don't think that there was a better um, description, better word for that than uh, what happened in 2020. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Yes. I was going to ask what happened, but then I thought it would be a bit, a bit stupid <laughs> to ask that question. Yeah. And, and, and again, the, the, the genesis of all that, although when I started to talk about the perfect labor storm 20 years ago, I wasn't talking about VUCA, uh, which you, you know, you'd mentioned. And it was well, a it was remind a, people what VUCA is. I yeah, it was, it was the theme of my TED talk. And, and yeah. VUCA uh, is an acronym uh, hmm. that's uh, 40 years old or so. And it represents volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Um, it, Warren Bennis, who is a you know one of one one of the people I, I really enjoyed reading, uh, thought a leadership thought leader for for many many years. Uh, he came up with that, and he said the world's going to be different, mm -hmm. uh, and we need to we need to people need to learn how to lead in a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. So again, um, I, I can't think of a better acronym. Uh, that would describe 2020 or the world we're going to live in and the world that's going to be moving forward. Yeah, for sure. Oh, actually, absolutely. And, and I've watched your TED talk and it's really insightful in terms of Thank explaining you. what that means and, 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 and explaining some of the the the, um, the macro impacts that um, uh, mm -hmm. all kinds of things are going to have an impact on. So we're, we're today we're talking about how business can feel more in control in the post pandemic um, uh, post dynamic world, and um, so what 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 is normal? What what is normal anymore? You know, there's there's a whole. It's interesting because I I personally didn't think about normal prior to everybody talking about going back to normal. You know, because we had this massive disruption last year, and you know, as it turns out, normal is our perception. Of what we're comfortable with that that normal is we just want to be comfortable we you know humans uh as i say suck at change exponential change uh they you know we like certainty uh one of my one of my colleagues uh talks about a lot about that humans are addicted to certainty and it's true uh, we, we want to know what's going to happen uh, even people who like change like myself 
uh, or are willing to change and are adaptable, uh, we, we still prefer some certainty in our life. Um, and, and therefore, um, we need to be comfortable. We need to learn how to be com comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. And, you know, the, again, talking about any, stere you know, you don't want to stereotype anybody. But there are some, but everybody has a different degree of being uncomfortable or being comfortable with un being uncomfortable. Some people are extremely uncomfortable. Uh, they're stressed out. They're burnt out. Uh, there's even mental illness that results uh, from that. And then there's other people that may not like it, but they sort of thrive. You know, it's that firefighter. You know, mm -hmm. doesn't like fire, but but starts fires to 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 kind of run into the burning buildings because that's the thrill of it. And uh, but we definitely need to learn how to become more comfortable and with being uncomfortable. And I, I that's that's really where I've spent most of my last five years, but especially the last year and a half, taking a deep dive down that 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 rabbit hole. And it is a huge rabbit hole because now we're talking about how do we how do we get people to change their behavior? Uh, and any, anytime you talk about humans changing behavior, uh, just just turn on the TV anytime and <laughs> and you'll see how difficult it is and how polarized that topic can be. So you you've actually um, been doing a lot of thinking around um, the fact that people currently feel out of control. So take us through that. What what is it that you've been that the think the thought process that you've been going through? Because I know I don't know about you. I've certainly felt over the last eighteen months that we I just don't know what's going to happen to the point yeah. where I kind of don't watch the news anymore because it kind of pointless because it changes it, it. You know, there was a time when you kind of knew what the news was going to be, um, and, and now there's variants and there's vaccines and all kinds of things, and and I don't know what's happening. Right, and there's so much of it. I mean, there's there, there's you know, like this morning, you know, um, the events in Florida, uh, you know, yeah. building collapses and, yeah. and you, know, you immediately go to thinking about the people, but what, you know, that's, what about it? You know, everybody's talking about infrastructure. So there's, there's always something going on. Just when you think you, you sort of got that calm, you got it figured out, you're okay. Then there's some, some disruption. Um, the the work that it was that it was involved in, other than just talking about change and that we that abstractly people need to become <laughs> comfortable with it, uh, a, a lot of work has been done on something called the adaptability quotient, uh, and uh, I, I I was able to partner with a group uh, that was doing a tremendous amount of research in that. So I give them credit; they did the research. I'm just I'm just living off it, thriving off it, standing uh, on the shoulders of giants. All right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and we're all and we realize that we're all still learning about mm -hmm. it. I mean, it's it it takes it literally takes a village. <laughs> it's going to take a lot of people to figure this out. No, no one has the answers. And if they do, run <laughs> because <laughs> it's it's not that simple. Mm -hmm. uh, but what they what they did was they they identified uh, fifteen actually seventeen dimensions. Two of those are if you put a team together, but but as individuals. And and I think the five that I've been focusing on a lot because these are the skills that can that you can change. People can grow. Uh, going back to how do you become comfortable being uncomfortable? Uh, we, you've heard a lot about grit and resilience, and those are two of those. And, you know, people want to stand on the shoulders of grit and resilience to, to go forward. The problem and, with that. And, what, is, and what's your definition of grit? I've watched the, the TED talk about what it is. Right. I yeah, actually thought the person was describing me, but, yeah. um, you know, what, what, is, what is grit? Yeah. I mean, very, I mean, very simply, it's just perseverance. Right. It's endurance. Um, it's it's that that long term goal focus. You just you, you have a path and you're going to get there regardless, whatever. It's the marathon runner. It's it's the um, you know, you hear these stories of, of people, you know, amputees and, um, you know, people from war and terrorism. I mean, people who've just overcome incredible obstacles. And how did they keep that focus? How do they get it done? Very admirable. The problem is it's reaction. You know, I mean, grit is, it's also, it takes a passion. I mean, so the def, Angela Duckworth's definition of it is it's perseverance and passion. Uh, but it, it, it's sort of a laser focus and too much grit can get you in trouble. I mean, people that just aren't going to quit. Uh, and sometimes you have to learn when to quit. I mean, look at Blockbuster. <laughs> you know, yeah, you can, yes. you, can look at, you can look at a lot of businesses. Um, 
and and then resilience is similar to to the grit. It, they sort of go hand in hand because with in order to endure, there are going to be setbacks. There are going to be new challenges. There's going to be things that unexpectedly happen, and you have to bounce back. You have to emotionally, spiritually, physically uh, work through some situations. So grit and resilience. Are, are two components. And there's so much written about that, uh, you know, any given day uh, about that if you've got grit, you can make it. If you've got resilience, you can make it. Resilience was the word of the year in 2020 by several organizations and dictionaries. The problem is, is that continuing to move forward when the environment around you is changing and resilience is just falling down and getting back up, but keeping on that same path uh, doesn't work in today's world. I mean, sometimes you got to zig when the world zags, yeah. uh, and or 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 go along with that. So I, I heard this, and I give him credit, David Houle, uh, who's a futurist, uh, and I interviewed him a few weeks ago. We're going to have a, another discussion uh, in in a few more weeks. Um, he talked about in his new book. He talks about cognitive dissonance, which happens to be one of the other dimensions. But he talks about B, uh, a Bruce Lee quote. Um, you know, martial artist. And yeah. I, I thought it was brilliant. And he and Bruce Lee said, be water. It was be water, my friend. That was his quote. And what that meant was in you, you basically become fluid and water takes the shape of the container that it's in. Yes. And if you use that as a metaphor today is what's the world going to look like? And it's a little amorphous. It's a little unpredictable. We don't know, but there's still a shape and we need to do that. But that shape's going to change. It's mm -hmm. that that we, we figure out, okay, here's the container we need to pour the water into. But that water, that container is going to change. The problem is, is most people are just pour, <laughs> tend to be pouring the water all over the place. It's just mm -hmm. running all over the place, like out of a, 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 a plugged up bathtub. And um, that's not a, a good strategy to move forward. Uh, so when we talk about, you know, where do we need to move forward? We need to be water. And in order to do that, you need grit, you need resilience. We're going to continue to need focus and we're going to need to bounce back from events. Um, but we need uh, to understand cognitive dissonance. We call it mental flexibility. It's how do you take two opposing thoughts? How do you listen to CNN and Fox News and MSNBC at the same time and, and not, not start throwing rocks at the TV, um, but trying to say, what's the common theme? Um, that, that What's the direction? How do we make sense of this? It's very challenging to do, I, I got to tell you, um, but we need to become much more comfortable doing that. So mental flexibility is a third one. Um, another one is growth mindset. Um, if you're not familiar with the work of uh, Carol Dweck, um, yeah. You know, we many of us grew up. I, I, I personally, I did. Um, you know, she talks about fixed mindset and growth mindset. You know, fixed mindset was that hey, you're really, really smart. Um, you know, you worked hard. Um, yeah, you, you're top of the class because you just got it. You got the right genes. You got the right place. You fell in the right. And then you start to believe that press, and it's like yeah. I don't really. I'm just smart. I don't have to learn anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you stop taking chances because you don't want to look stupid. It's like if I admit to somebody, and this is a problem with leadership today, uh, with authenticity and 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 vulnerability and and transparency. Uh, if I admit that I don't know something, and I'm being paid, I, I'm either the CEO of my own company like you, uh, or or you're being paid, you know, millions and millions of dollars. How do you admit that you don't have the answers? Mm -hmm. And and that's a fixed mindset. What happens is that people have to understand that that you're going to make mistakes. We're always learning. We're always trying. And, and you can't continually make mistakes. But there's got to be an opportunity to innovate, to try new things, to explore, to grow, that we're, we're never finished learning. Uh, so growth mindset is a fourth one. And, and the fifth one's really, really interesting. I found this fascinating and something relatively new on the, in, in, our, in our world and, uh, is unlearning. Yes. So we talk about learning. We talk about open mindedness. We're talking about making sense. We talk about grit and resilience. But the problem is, is that there's so much information coming our way and we try to just pile it on. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So I'm not going to give up the way I used to do things. I'm not going to change my old behaviors. I'm just going to use that new piece. It's sort of like a Jenga tower. You keep building it up higher and higher. But instead of removing a piece and trying to replace it to rebalance it, you just keep piling on, yeah. you know, blocks 
it doesn't work. Eventually, it's going to collapse. And uh, the analogy I talk about on learning uh, is it's like defragging your hard drive, if anybody's ever done that. And or re- I used to do it when I had a PC, yes. Yeah, or uncluttering your desk. Uh, it, it's just that eventually you have duplicate files, you have receipts, you have folders, uh, you have all this information. If on computers, every time you do something, it downloads temporary files. Um, and eventually you just got to reorganize it, create new space. It's not getting rid of all the information. It's getting rid of the duplicate, the old stuff, the stuff that doesn't work, uh, and, and reorganizing the other information. So there's room for new information. There's room to try new behaviors and grow. So the, the five dimensions that we talk about that people can work on, the good thing is we can learn these. These are abilities. These are skills, just like learning how to use Word, learning how to be an engineer, learning how to be a doctor. You can learn to develop your grit, improve your resilience, improve yep. your mental flexibility mindset, and on learning. Um, that's the path that we've been working on. Uh, and whether there was a big article that this month's Harvard Business Review front page uh, is about adaptability. And they talk about it slightly different, but um, they, again, the, the, the two authors have at Baines, uh, they have done a lot of work with that, but talks about this, the same type of thing and, and how we need to identify our vulnerabilities. And we each have different vulnerabilities. You can be, you can have grit. And I can have resilience as a team, maybe it works, but as individuals, we, we have to learn how to be stronger as individuals as well. So there's a lot of talk about it and a lot of excitement. And I'm, I'm certainly obviously excited about that because the risk is uh, like the World Economic Forum and, and McKinsey and Deloitte, they've all recognized that there's 300 plus million people that are at risk for being left behind before the end of the decade. And we're not just talking about poverty and and undereducation. We're, we're, I mean, we're literally talking about being left behind. Um, a good instance of that is, I mean, just on an everyday basis, if you go to a restaurant these days, there are no menus. Yeah. If you go to a lot of places, you yeah. have to use a QR code and think about how many people don't still have flip phone flip phones that yeah. don't have digital phones. Yeah. Um, even if they have a smartphone, they may not know how to use a, a QR code. Uh, so, I mean, there's just little things that day to day function. Uh, how are you going to you know, be able to get by. And uh, we need people to be more comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. At the beginning of the pandemic, I taught my my mother how to use Zoom and it's been fantastic for her. Um, you know, it's she's she's shielding and has been for 18 months. Right. And just being able to talk to people. And what you were saying also, we were recently, my partner and I recently went into Kingston upon Thames, which is our, kind of our, our nearest mm-hmm. um, town. And um, normally you can just walk into there and get it, walk into a restaurant and say, can I have a table? And they usually have got space. And we walk in there and they say, have you filled in the app? And we go, no. Well, you can't get a table then. <laughs> and, and, and I looked at my partner and said, right, you know, what are the apps? Because, you know, it, and, and, and absolutely. And, and, and you could see that the people that were out were, I would say, um, people from about 30 downwards because there's a certain amount of exclusion going on because the people ab- above 30 hadn't worked out to, to go out. You needed to have a mobile phone and, a, and an app. And and, and, yeah. and, and, there and, is- and and we can talk about, well, we just won't go out to eat, but um, things like <laughs> that are going to happen in healthcare. I mean, yeah. um, there's, there's going to be other crisis. You know, maybe it's not going to be a, plan- a pandemic. Hopefully we won't experience another pandemic at this level for another hundred years, but we're going to have other outbreaks and we're going to have other things. Um, it's even how are you going to be able to access healthcare? Uh, yeah. Because everything's going to become pointless or touchless, not pointless, but, yeah. but touchless. Uh, and and again, there's just a lot of people that just don't know how to do that. And it's and it's creating a lot. It's, it's creating challenges for business and leadership. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, we, you know, so part of the responsibility of, of, of every business should be to help not only their employees to find work to be able to find workers, uh, but to be able to help, you know, be able to participate in the community. I mean, as if people aren't, if, if, if we don't start helping other people become more comfortable being uncomfortable, uh, we're going to lose consumers. Uh, mm-hmm. They're going to become a burden to society uh, and it shouldn't be that way. So there's, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of work to do. 
so so let me go through those 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 things again so that the uh, the key um the five points you made was um uh, grit and resilience and that's about having a passion and, and perseverance um unlearning mental flexibility which is the ability to hold two things in your mind at the same time right um and growth mindset which is or it, it, basically it's 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 treating every day as, as a school day you're always learning correct is that, is, exactly. am i right no you're exactly right yeah okay. those, those are the five skills no nope, you, you captured it well okay brilliant thank you Lara, it's been fantastic. I, 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 I've been really excited about talking today because I, I, when we met and we did the, the mm -hmm. prep call, I mean, you, 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 you talk an awful, well, you, you, everything you say is sensible. Um, and it's really insightful for coming on and saying, these are the five things, the skills that we need today to, to kind of get through this. Um, and I really appreciate you coming on and sharing that. And thanks for the opportunity. Uh, hopefully we reached some people and if, if nothing else, they, they felt a little bit more confident in uh, what Changing the world one person at a time, Ira. Yep. It, so remind, it, remind it, people what your, your your step to your right so people can see your book, Tis Your Right. Yeah. And that's Recruiting available. Recruiting in the Age of Globalization. Yeah, it's available up on Amazon or you can go to my, uh, up on my website as well. Okay, yes. And, and remind people where they can get hold of you. Yeah, uh, two websites, uh, successperformancesolutions.com uh, or irawolf.com. Um, I'm also very, very active on LinkedIn yes. uh, and Twitter. So if you, it, again, you can just search my name and and I, I will pop up in Google. <laughs> and, and I think that's how we met, wasn't it, on, on social at some point? I, yes, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Ira, thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing your insight today. And um, I'll see you on social sometime. Hey, thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. You're Stay welcome. Safe. Take care. Thanks.